All right, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? Got more coffee, and we're going to be wrapping up the MACD and going over a couple good or uh, best practice choices you can make, and then uh, we'll move on to some more advanced functions or concepts you can use. So, one of the things that you want to be doing is titling anything that's visible. Um, over on this end. So you'll notice that when you put an input, it is titled the same as the variable name, right? So that short length is this short length. Well, sometimes we don't want that because that's not as easy for people to read, right? So you can use what's called the title. So after what you input is, we say a title is equal to short EMA length. Okay? equal to long EMA length length and this is equal to signal EMA length and this is good practice because it makes your indicators easy to use and it also um, <clears throat> it, it gives you easier control of var variables because you're not searching around or trying to remember what a specific variable was called and you can also do these for the plots um, Let's say histogram, comma. And the reason for that is we just have three unnamed plots. And so you have to match up the color, which may be fine if you only have a couple plots. But when you have like 32 or up to 64 plots, that's when it starts getting noisy. So you can say title is equal to MACD line space. Title is equal to... D signal comma right copy this drop it in here and that doesn't look like much changed but now when we go back to your plots histogram MACD line MACD signal are now visible short EMA long EMA signal EMA are now visible so it's just it's a it makes your life easier it makes anyone who uses your indicators life easier right so <coughs> You can also do that for your titles, right? So title will be the long title that shows up on the script list. You can also do short title. So if you wanted to say my first, or if you want to do Benequants, which is what we are, the Benequants MACD, okay? And what that'll do is it'll change how it's saved and how it's displayed on the actual screen. Like that. There you go, so Benequance MACD, but if you were to look this up in your script list, um, my first MACD. So that's just something that keeps um, keeps things simple. The other thing that we haven't talked about is another option in the study, which is the overlay. And this is Boolean, meaning it can only be true or false. Defaults to false, which is why it's an oscillator right now, but if you put in true, paste this. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to add it to chart again. Well, it's on your screen now. It's not an oscillator. It matches, well, it tries to match one-to-one -one with price. So, depending on what you want to do, um, sometimes you want it on the screen, sometimes you want it off. It just depends on the actual goal you are trying to achieve. So, we'll save that back, add it to chart again, and it's going to be back to being an oscillator. So, Next is a function called hline. Eh, I guess. Yeah, yeah, before hline, I'll show you some custom coloring stuff. So there's a lot of customizations you can do. Like I said, there is built-in colors in TradingView. So you can always get to the documentation by holding control and double-clicking one of these variables. Um, if you hover over it, it'll say control click to pop up documentation. Uh, so there is all these built in colors into trading view, but uh, more often than not, not that interested in using the colors they give us. So you can do, you can change it one of two ways, right? You can use a hex color and put it in directly. So if you wanted to say, like, um, 
E3, 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 which is a gray color. You can save that hex right there. It looks like it's actually a really bright white in here. Do something like that. doesn't change that much, but the hex color is now different. Um, if you're changing a bunch of colors, I prefer to keep it something like this. It looks like I kept some notes over here. So I had chosen for red 8E2, E2F, and a light color called C7, 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 dark color called 2E, 2D, oops, 3, 2. Okay, and so you can save these colors as variables just like we did above, and um, it saves it as a color specifically. Um, most of those variable types won't matter until you really start getting into stuff where you're breaking, <laughs> actively breaking the software all of the time. Because um, PineScript is relatively limited in terms of some of the advanced things that we've tried to do, but is what it is. So, I'm going to save this one. It's coal. Oops, actually, I need to save it as color red. And we'll just paste this down here. Color light. C7, C7. Let's deny there. Light, color dark is equal to. 2E, 2D, 32, right? And then we can start replacing these if we want, which this one is. Right. My color, gotcha. We're going to ignore the histogram for now because we're about to make a change to it. So we're going to do this. We're going to do color red. Color light. And we'll paste that in. And now we have custom hex colors. Okay, so it totally depends. It's up to you. Um, you can use the defaults or not. It doesn't really um, doesn't matter too much, doesn't impact loading time, but if it's readable if you're developing for colorblind or if you're trying to have a specific aesthetic, that's the way you'd want to go about it. So we have another function called hline. Um, excuse me. Sometimes you want to put a purely just horizontal line on, and that is not necessarily as applicable to a Mac D, but it could be on some other type of oscillator. Let me go find. Yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to make a new script, right? We're just going to call this quants highest bars. And we're going to come back to the script later, but we're going to do part of this just to go over the hline function, which renders a horizontal line at a given fixed price level, takes price, title, color, line style, line width, edible, Note that this is different from style, um, just different settings, and options, and I think it's a dotted circle dash, um, some other things, but this also counts as a plot, not too important until you start trying to max out your plots, uh, which most, most people don't, but for you to do an H line, um, which functions best as um, the tops and bottoms for fixed fixed range indicators. Uh, we'll call this highest bars. We're going to say overlay is equal to false for now. And we're going to make a really simple RSI just because it's built in, right? So we're going to say the input of 14 is equal to look back length. Okay. And we're going to say this is the test RSI, and it has a built-in RSI function in training view. And you can just say close of, um, keep this as look back length. 
are kind of skirting around what this is eventually going to be, so it doesn't matter too much. So we're going to say plot the test RSI, and title it the RSI, and we're going to make the color equal to red. Okay. And then to do the H line, we are going to put two H lines at the famous or standard RSI levels, um, or at least near them, which I think is 3070 or 2080. I don't remember off the top of my head, but we'll go with 2080 just because it's simple to remember. And we're going to say color equals red, or actually, sorry, color equals maroon. Give it a little distinguishment. And at 80, color equals maroon. We can copy this, bring it back over. We're going to open a new script. Right, place that, and I think we need the version tag at version equals three. Toss that in, okay. Highest bars, save, add to chart. There you go. And yeah, it's definitely. 3070, but that looks that's close enough. So you can see the RSI moving and you know touch down 30 getting close to 70 and so this will give you bounded ranges if you're um, if you have important levels that you want to focus on or set for a user just easy signals the reason you don't do it on a MACD is the um, MACD's highest point and lowest point is relative to the time frame you're on because it's the actual difference of two EMAs on an actual chart which is pretty interesting actually so we have a 12 EMA and a 26 EMA. Let me get rid of this, right? So we're going to pop up two EMAs. Just like this, and move an exponential. We'll put this one at 12. Make it white. And this one at 26. Okay. Let me get rid of these. Make this a little bit easier to see. <laughs> and go with green or something. I don't keep colored candles on. Um, personal preference of mine. But you can see this difference in the MACD. That's all that this measures, right? It's just telling you how far apart are these lines when they cross up, cross zero, which is right here. Um, tells you about positive movement. And then as impulses happen or end, MACD will stutter, and that kind of makes your divergences or your momentum. Um, but that's just that's the basic essence of how a MACD works, and that's what we're measuring. And so all you're doing is taking that and putting it in a little bounded oscillator. Um, but like I said, can't do, can't do horizontal lines other than zero for this because, um, like up here, this value is 200. If you drop this to 14, well, it's 80 now. So just not something that keeps horizontal lines. You can always put one down at zero. Personal preference most of the time. Let's see, what other cool things do I want to show you guys? Let's do switches. So switches are conditional operators. Um, there's lots of options for these. And... See, switches for colors and switches for options. So, if you're familiar with any sort of trading, or sorry, any sort of formal programming language, the usual format is if, and if the variable is met, then it does something else, or l if, it'll do something else, and then eventually else, and it'll end. So it functions the same, it's a little bit simpler. There is the option to do if statements, but um, more often than not, this is the good way. I, I find this the easiest and most effective way. Um, so the way it works, because it will become intuitive, is if cat is true, then A, else do B. And so you always want to set your conditions first, and then you question mark, and if cat's true, then it will return whatever's after the question mark, and if not, it'll return whatever's after the semicolon, or after the colon. So if you want to make it more complicated you say if cat then a if dog then b well if it's neither and it's an elephant then i want you to do c 
and you can nest these infinitely, right? And so we're only going to make simple on and off switches. Um, all right, do crosses. Yeah. Okay. So something you can do is have PineScript draw crosses every time that these MACDs cross, right? And we're going to knock this out real fast. Let's see. Let's go back to the MACD. I'm going to call this section crosses. And so we're going to be looking for something called a cross watch. And it's going to look for the function cross, which basically checks did the next two things that we put in cross. And it doesn't matter if they go up or down. Um, you have two different functions that you can also use, which is cross up and cross down. If you're only looking for those specific type of crosses, we don't care. We only care about specific. We're just looking for any type of crosses. So the way that this is going to work is we're going to say signal line, Mac D line. And so if, if the signal line crosses the Mac D line, which it did there, 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 there. So if it does, then we want it to plot on the signal line. And if it doesn't, so if there's no crosses, then we don't want it doing anything, right? Because it's, it's relatively unimportant now. So we're going to have it, oopsie, tabbed out for no reason. Plot the cross watch like this. Titles equal crosses. And we are going to have it with a line width of 4. And its style is going to be the actual cross, which is a little plus guy. And so bring this in. Oh boy, why don't you like me? Oh, forgot to capitalize. It's very picky. Okay. So, should be getting some kind of cross. There we go. This need to be re added. So now we can see there's crosses that appear every time the MACD crosses. And so, run a little bit long. I'm going to go ahead and end this. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to color this specific um, to know whether or not the MACD is crossing up or down. Um, and some other kind of switch based logic, including turning lines on and off or background on and off. And so we'll cover that in the next video. Uh, I'll see you guys there.